Barb, let's hear the Norwegian you've been learning. Jeg um, har det a bear bra. You're getting better, but I wouldn't call you fluent yet. To become fluent, it's not enough to know the words of a new language. You have to be able to access them swiftly so that you can understand the quick sentences of native speakers and speak effortlessly yourself. For that, you need the brain's powerful yet mysterious procedural learning system. We've already talked about how you form sets of links in long-term memory, but we haven't yet mentioned that there are two different systems you use to deposit those links, the declarative and the procedural systems. These systems deposit links in different places of long-term memory. To really understand what you're learning, you often need both declarative and procedural sets of links in your long-term memory. Whoops, <laughs> that went by really fast. Let's rewind this and explain more slowly and clearly. The declarative system is what you use when you're first consciously trying to learn something. For example, when you're trying to memorize a new word in a foreign language, or understand how cardiac function works, or learn a new technique in math. Declarative learning progresses step by logical step. The declarative system takes information from working memory, it goes through the hippocampus and into long-term memory. You're mostly conscious of your thinking through the declarative system. The procedural system, on the other hand, goes through your basal ganglia. Unlike the declarative system, you're not aware of how the procedural system learns, but you are aware of the outcome when you learned it. Or not. The procedural learning system has two streams that flow into making neural links. This stream, on the left, coming from working memory and the front of your brain, involves goal-based learning. You can see the goal-based learning in action as this man hits the golf ball. He's consciously using his working memory to tell his procedural system to hit that golf ball. Once the orders from working memory input go into the procedural system, the man doesn't really know what's going on. The procedural system is like a black box. A box that somehow almost magically gradually figures out how to put that ball into the hole. Or whatever else it's trying to learn. People are not aware of how the procedural system is doing its learning, but they are aware of whether or not a hit was successful and they actually sink the ball into the hole. Feedback about whether a hit was successful is how the procedural system slowly learns what it's supposed to do. The other stream of your procedural system involves the habit system. This stream is what you use when you're learning a habit like the route you habitually use to drive a car or bike to work. In fact, it's the same system you use to learn to ride a bike. The black box of the procedural system learns slowly. It needs lots of practice to do its learning. But once it's learned how to do something, watch out, it's really fast. You learn lots of things by using your procedural system. Sports, aspects of mathematics, and speaking your native language. The procedural system is even what you rely on to type on a keyboard. This system's slow to learn. After all, that black box has to have lots of inputs and outputs in order to learn. But once it's learned something, it can be very fast to react. That's why you can type so quickly. However, the procedural system's also inflexible. Just try to type if someone switched around the keys on a keyboard. Or try driving on the other side of the road when you visit a foreign country with different driving habits. We've learned a lot about the procedural system in this video. In the next video, let's tie these ideas together to see how they can help you learn better. I'm Barb Oakley. And I'm Ola Shui. Thank you for learning to learn like a pro.